As you may already know, the Battlefield 5 Chapter 4 Defying the Odds update is coming to your games tomorrow on the 25th of June. You can expect to have a zero downtime update, so if you're in-game you need to exit and download the update at the time recommended for your platform. This can be found on Twitter or on the Reddit post explaining exactly when you need to do this update, but for most people you'll be getting back from work or waking up in the morning and there you go, the update will be ready to download. Now this is a larger update that is adding content for Tides of War and the Armoury alongside several quality of life improvements and bug fixes. The most noteworthy of the issues that are being fixed are those that address the performance issues when firing or getting fired at. The stuttering issue that many people have said have ruined the gaming experience for them. They're frame spikes and essentially DICE are going to be fixing this with these performance based updates. They're also bringing tweaks to weapons, vehicles and soldier behaviour too. I'm going to go through the patch notes in this video. You may have seen other videos going through a few of the leaked notes the other day, but I'm going to go through them in more detail. And of course, if you just want to read through them yourself, you can go in the description of this video and check out the patch notes that were posted on Reddit earlier today. Starting out with the vehicle fixes, that aeroplane engine sound that annoys you after it does a flyby and just sticks above your head is going away. Hopefully this will be gone for everybody as it's a very, very annoying bug. DICE have fixed a bug that allowed players to spot enemies with stationary weapons, again something that needed to go from the game. Maybe it didn't affect you a whole lot but it was definitely there. And they've also fixed an issue with the visual dust effect on some moving tanks. There are a few other fixes to vehicles, none of which are that massive, but they definitely improve the quality of life in-game. When it comes to weapons, gadgets and specialisation fixes, DICE have changed the boys AT rifle magazine to contain 5 plus 1 bullets. They've also adjusted the medium range scope, so now it correctly shows scope glint, giving the weapon a little bit of a change with the bullets, but also a nerf I think with that scope glint because you no longer just appear on the map as a prone player, you have that scope glint that gives away your position. Finally, bipods now deploy and undeploy with a better response. Previously, the game checked whether the bipod should deploy or undeploy every 0.3 seconds. This is now 0.1 seconds, meaning it will feel smoother. DICE have made adjustments to the medical and ammo crates in Battlefield 5. Players that have selected the medical crate or the ammo crate can now be seen holding it in one hand when viewed in third person. DICE have also adjusted the medical crate's healing radius to 4 meters when deployed and carried, and the medical crate owner is awarded healing score when the crate's aura heals friendly players. Few changes to the ammo crate, when it's deployed or selected, the ammo crate will now resupply your teammates primary and secondary ammo within a 4 meter radius, it also gives score in a similar way to the medical crate change. The ammo crate owner also earns resupply score when the crate's aura resupplies friendly players. And both ammo and medical crates now collide with vehicles, meaning that the crates can be placed on top of vehicles and will remain in place when driving around. In other words, the heal mobile has returned, as DICE put it, which I think is pretty cool. You can combine some good team play with vehicles now and it might introduce some more close quarters tank gameplay and players sticking near tanks and possibly healing them to keep them in the battle. Perhaps one of the best changes in this update is the nerf to AP mines. There has been a change in the explosion delay after activation, increasing it to 1 second from 0.7 seconds, giving you a chance to get out of there when the AP mine is activated. The activation radius has also been increased by 20%, meaning that there is a higher chance you set it off, but obviously the AP mine will be further away from you when that happens and the blast radius size has been increased to 7 meters from 6 meters to align with that activation delay. Again, if you hit the AP mine you have plenty of time to get out of there, as opposed to before where the AP mine would trigger and you had no chance to escape. The max damage in blast radius has been increased to 1.5 meters from 1 meter, again to align with the activation delay, meaning they are not completely useless, but you have to remember that you have that additional time so good players with reactions will be able to escape them. Interestingly, players can now avoid blast damage from AP mines if they manage to go prone in time. 
Going from sprinting to prone is less likely to allow the player to survive as the transition is longer than a simple stand to prone transition, so timing is everything. The major fix for me is the max amount of placeable AP mines has been reduced from 2 to 3. The minimum distance between deployed AP mines has been increased to 3.6 meters from 0.7, which is a massive change, and deployed AP mines are now unspawned one second after the player dies and moves to the spawn screen or parrot cam. This is a very good change again, making AP mines more of a weapon or gadget that you need to think about using as opposed to spawn in and drop them everywhere. Finally, with the AP mines, and there have been quite a few changes, moving whilst prone or crouched, but not crouch sprinting, will no longer trigger the AP mine in some scenarios. DICE haven't specified which scenarios, but there definitely has been a change there. The Piat, Rifle Grenade Launcher, and AT Grenade Pistol have had some changes. The Piat does have a one-shot kill radius against infantry reduced to 0.25 meters. The splash damage now deals a minimum of 55 damage against infantry up to 3 meters and overall the Piat has been reduced in its effectiveness versus infantry which is a good change in my opinion. The rifle grenade launcher that again has been nerfed the maximum blast damage reduced to 80 from 100. The blast radius increased to 5 meters from 4 meters and quick thinking players can now throw back the weapons grenade, similar to what you do with a normal frag grenade. It's quite tricky, but if it flies past you I think you have a split second to launch it back. The grenade projectile is also represented as a grenade icon, as you see with the frag grenade, again giving you a chance to spot it, get out of the way, potentially throw it back in time. The AT Grenade Pistol has had a single change. The damage on impact against infantry has been lowered from 100 to 98, meaning you cannot get that one-shot kill with it. There are quite a few weapon fixes in this patch. Starting out, the MG34 now applies skins properly on the magazine. It did annoy a few people. I personally didn't use the weapon, but there we go. A lot of people did specify this as something that needed fixing. The hitbox on the incendiary grenades has been changed so it better matches the visual effect. It's so frustrating getting burned by an incendiary grenade that you're clearly not standing in. So that has been altered, so hopefully it lines up a little more. The Krag Jorgensen has its missing reload animation replaced, and players are no longer able to enter a bleed out state when getting killed outside of the combat area. Not exactly a weapon fix, but something that is in that list and is a good fix to have. Now interestingly, when we're talking about the bleed out state, players can now bleed out more quickly in the man down state. This has been increased to 2.5 seconds as opposed to 3.5 seconds, and also you can hold on for longer in the man down state, increasing to 25.6 seconds instead of 21.33. Quite a significant upgrade if you ask me, because whenever I get to a teammate or squad mate that needs reviving, it's always right on the cusp when I can't get them, as it usually would be, and it still probably will be with 25 seconds, but it gives me a little bit more time to keep someone in the game. There are quite a few maps and mode fixes. I won't get into all of them because they're not really that crazy for me to explain. There are loads of them to read through. A lot of them are related to Frontlines, Squad Conquest, Firestorm, a mode that I don't play anymore, and Team Deathmatch. Worth a look, as I said, the patch notes are down beneath. If you play those modes and really want to see those modes be altered and improved. Vehicle spawning has been altered. On larger maps, spawning in a tank meant that you set yourself up for potentially a very long drive into battle. DICE have now added movable tank spawn positions, which means that you should spawn closer to where the infantry spawns. An interesting mechanic, potentially difficult because you don't know where all the enemies are, so you might spawn in a tank behind loads of enemies. Let's see how it works out. It's obviously good though on some maps where you have to drive for five minutes to get to the action, which can be a pain. There have been some changes to the UI, the HUD, the options, assignments, and some various fixes. Platoon emblems are now properly equipped to weapons when applied and they have fixed a few of the assignments that weren't tracking or potentially had the wrong requirements. DICE have also increased the distance at which downed players can be notified of incoming medics from 25 meters to 50 meters. Importantly, DICE have decided that stability fixes should be at the top of the list in this patch 
and they have made improvements to sudden frame drops occurring when firing a stationary cannon or where getting shot while playing Firestorm and made general stability improvements. I'm hoping that the stuttering has been removed for good. For the console players out here, both Xbox One and PlayStation 4, you have an added manual lean toggle slash hold option added into the game. This is good for those console players that wanted to try out the new manual lean mechanics. I'm thinking that the next things DICE need to focus on, aside from the content in terms of the maps and the weapons and the modes, I'm thinking that the main thing is definitely the quality of life when it comes to cosmetics and company coins, with many people sitting on hundreds of thousands of coins and nothing to spend them on. These boins are good, I suppose, for making money for DICE, and they've got these cosmetics that people buy. You don't have to have them. They don't add much to the game. In fact, they're just a cosmetic, so really it's for your own enjoyment. However, you could make some of the elites incredibly expensive to buy, but potentially possible to buy with company coin. Even the skins, the stuff that came out a few months ago, maybe have them tens of thousands each. It doesn't matter. People have coins that they've grinded. They were expecting to be able to spend them when the game first came out, and now they can't. Potentially have that as an option in an upcoming patch, alongside tanker and pilot customization. It's been a while, but I'd like to see that introduced. The main positives from this have to be the improvements to stability, the nerfs to the explosives, and then the usual fixes that just get rid of some of those bugs, like the plane noise flying over your head, and then some of the more simple bugs that you might not notice, but they definitely do detract from the overall experience. If you want more information, check out the patch notes in the description below. Leave your comments on what you thought about this video, and of course, the patch notes in general, and I'll catch you in the next video.